I'm thrilled to close out our segment on investing with intent with Kara Williams. She is a senior partner and is the ESG strategy leader for Mercer. She also oversees Mercer's private wealth businesses in Canada and India and works with Mercer's multinational clients to deliver the best of Mercer's broad wealth solutions. So it's not just positive financial outcomes for organizations and their employees, but sustainable ones that are ultimately win for wealth as well as for the planet. I can tell Kara that you are the woman to pick first if we're going to be in an intramural match. So you are the person I want on my team. Thank you so much for having this fireside chat with me. Apologies. Thanks for having us on. No, no worries at all. This is this is how we know we're still in the world of Zoom. <laughs> so tell our audience a little bit how you think about supporting positive financial outcomes for your clients that are truly positive outcomes for the environment as well. The real question here is, can these actually coexist? Uh, absolutely, they can coexist. I mean, I think the, the, not only the panelists, but also the, um, the speakers that we had at the beginning have highlighted the fact that there is a no question that there's a direct interlink between doing right for the planet is actually good investment acumen. Um, it's a factor that needs to be taken into consideration when you're looking to make your investments. So not only is it um, doing right, but it actually is you know, a way for you to, to profit. And I think Elizabeth McGovern even mentioned that herself, right? That, that this is a, these are not two disconnected concepts. We've heard from your colleagues quite a bit about what you just said and how they think about the future of ESG, what Mercer is doing, what Bayer is doing, and what it means both internally within the sector, but also sector, uh, sorry, within the company, but also sector wide. So what is the driving principle for private sector to mobilize against the climate crisis? Is it really ESG? Can this be what brings companies together internally and uh, sector wide? Yeah, I, you know, I, there's been a bit of a mention of um, a number of, acu uh, of acronyms, and I think the the fact that there's regulation that is coming in around the globe um, that initially starts off as you know voluntary sort of volunteer pl pledges that, that various firms are making, um, and that the regulation now is becoming kind of more normalized as a really important step. So. There is no question that you see just about every corporate now talking about sustainability in some shape, um, whether or not they've gone to the lengths that maybe buyer has to incorporate these things into the way that they're trying to you know, shift and change their business towards their own sustainable future um, may not be to necessarily um, quite as advanced. But there is no question that ESG, so the you know, environmental, social, and governance factors are absolutely starting to take um, a big part, part at, at the corporate table, right? So you see most leadership teams that this is a core part of their discussions um, about, again, how are they going to shift their businesses for a changing world and in order to make sure that it is um, you know, a, a good place for, for people and, and for planet. So how much of this is really being driven by internal desire to, well, Mercer, for example, is a company that's really leading in this. Um, how much of this is really coming internally? And I don't mean necessarily to speak for other companies, but from, from somebody who is in this industry, what are you seeing? What are, what are kind of the trends that we're seeing versus how much of this is actually coming from uh, outside regulators that are demanding that and hopefully becoming more persistent and finding some way to hold companies accountable for those those that are delinquent. But how much of it is truly coming from within versus um, being mandated from outside? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think it's important to be cynical, right? When, when you're looking to mobilize your own savings towards investments, it, it's really important to have a good sense of whether or not you think a firm is authentic and what they're trying to achieve. And remember, you know, it is ESG, right? So firms, not everybody has decided that necessarily certain aspects of climate are what they want to prioritize. You know, other firms have made it very clear that they really want, you know, that it's the social agenda that they want to address, um, or it could potentially be certain governance aspects um, that they want to really work on. And it could be, a lot of times it's linked to what industries that they function in. There's no question that it's not necessarily true to the DNA of absolutely every firm that's out there. But what we are seeing is 
a lot of firms are starting to identify with the fact that having a purpose and having a value system in place is critical not only for them and how they drive their business and, and where they go in their own futures, but also in engaging their employee base as well as shareholders, right? So, so there is always the link to profit and you know, I'm not going to separate that, right? They, they, this isn't necessarily true altruism. But there is no question that a lot of firms have decided that there are certain aspects of ESG that are really important to them. They've chosen those, made those very clear. And I think it was Inga before who referred to measurement, you know, have said, you know, here are very clear set targets that we want to be held to account for. They say those out loud. They say it in front of their people. They say it in front of shareholders. And I think that is a huge and critical step. Absolutely, there are still firms that maybe you know we hear the term greenwashing a lot there, there's surely firms that haven't quite figured it out yet and certainly maybe firms who, who have the right intention but haven't quite figured out how to implement you know it, esg is massive right so if you look at environmental aspects and where do you where do you set your priorities or you look at the social aspects where do you set your priorities there it, it's an incredibly complex area but as soon as a company can kind of drive down to the things that really are important to them and again will hold themselves to account for those things um you start to see some really amazing authenticity emerging from from companies that start to have personalities um rather than a brand and i, I think um I think it is an absolute growing trend. Um, you know, I think those of us who work for Mercer, you know, there's certain priorities that have been very important to us for a very long time that our leadership has been very clear on and they've been consistent and we can believe it, right? So I, I think that's, you know, we, we happen to be lucky, but there are a lot of other firms out there that, that do hold, um, hold themselves to the same type of accountability as, as Mercer. I like that a lot. Companies have personalities and we can we can definitely see that the public is engaging ever more with companies via social media platforms, via the app that we are on right now that we don't have time app. And so individuals can get this information and it can really guide their decision making behavior. So thank you for sharing this information, which might not be evident or easily accessible all the time. But we want we want to get the public on board and we want to be able to sh uh, sh share with the public the power that they have in terms of which companies to align with, which personalities match their own. Right. So what does this mean for the individual? Why? Why do their decisions matter? How do you think about that? Their, their decisions matter. Let's let's go back to the to cynicism. Their decisions matter because they hold the dollars, right? So every single dollar matters to every single corporate if they want to last longer longer term. Um, so there, I think that they the where we've seen the biggest shift is in the past. It used to be always about the biggest investors, right? The ones with the biggest asset pools um, that were were driving you know driving decisions that were happening in, in corporations. What we're finding now is you know. 13, 14 year old girl in Sweden can actually have genuine, true impact in shifting the way that governments are, are setting standards and, and policies. I think now in, people realize that an individual actually can be a lot more important in a decision and the shift that a company is going to make. Um, so I, you know, there, there is no underestimating the power of, of, of the individual anymore. And social media certainly has made that much easier, right? So um, I, you know, I'm not sure we, we would all know um, who Greta was if it wasn't for the power of, of social media. So thanks, thanks to these types of platforms, hopefully people feel more engaged, feel more empowered. Um, because they absolutely are, and corporates absolutely listen to the individual, not only as um, you know, the, the people who are potentially going to be investing in, in, into them, but also as you know, future future customers, as uh, as well as as future employees. And I think there there's a, a huge value chain um, along the value of, of every individual that wasn't recognized in the past. And of course, individuals wear multiple hats. Individuals are part of communities. Individuals are affiliated with various organizations. Individuals are employees. And so what has Mercer, Mercer learned along its sustainability journey that would be helpful and relevant for individuals that are somewhere along this journey themselves in a variety of different associations? So as the consumer, as the employee, Mercer is a multinational and it's far along on the spectrum of um, where other companies are or hope to be as it relates to ESG. So some of the so, some advice to those other multinationals or those that are somewhere between startup phase and establishing themselves as real um, contenders in sustainability activity, 
where what are some of the takeaways that you could provide to them um, in terms of the, some of the challenges that Mercer has faced and has overcome? I, I would actually I'd start with what um, what Klaus referred to earlier. I think it's really important to um, be extremely honest with where you have had any kind of shortfalls, where you may not be achieving the targets that you wanted to achieve. Um, missteps. I think that, the, again, this goes back to that level of authenticity of firms really being able to say, you know, mea culpa, I did not do this right, and now I'm going to fix it, and being very open and honest about it. And that's, a, again, a big shift. You didn't see firms do this in the past. It was all about you know, sort of the, the PR um, shift to, to try to cover, you know, kind of cover any, any, anything that they may thought may have thought of as being negative. Um, so I think the the, the first step, and it's not an easy step, again, is establishing your own values. What do you want to stand for as a firm? Um, again, you know, if we refer to, to the personalities, who do you want to be known as, regardless if you're you know, a, FTSE, a FTSE 100 firm? Um, who are you? And what do you want to be held to account for? What do you want your people to be proud of? Um, and then again, measure it and tell people where you are on your journey shift it, reassess it, reassign if it's not where you need to be, become more aggressive in those targets if need be, um, or, or and if you fall short, again, just honestly address that fact. Fantastic, Karen. And in our last minute on this very, uh, very auspicious date of April 22nd, Earth Day, what is the message you would like to share with our millions that are tuning in, uh, that are listening, and that are hoping to to learn something today and to take something away from this special day that is Earth Day, what would you like to leave our audience with? I think the, the one word that would have been said and repeated most often amongst um, my, my fellow speakers today was engagement. And I think it is critical, especially as um, today is Earth Day. The more that you realize that you actually are responsible and you can engage with the people who are managing your money, the corporations where you're putting your money, the products that you're purchasing, the way that you deal with your own individual carbon footprint. We as people and in each individual have so much more power than we ever had thought that we had. Um, and I think that's been the, the most powerful shift that we've seen. And the, the beauty is that hopefully it's enough to, to recognize that in order to um, you know, address climate change and, and hit, the, hit the net zero targets that we've got, um, that you know, each individual person starts to recognize the fact that we aren't powerless. This isn't about us sitting back and just having the having governments make all the changes. It, it's corporates, it's governments, it's individuals, all of us together as communities coming together to, to address what we've done. I love that. Thank you so much. You really resonated with what we like to say at We Don't Have Time is that together we are the solution to the climate crisis. Thank you so much, Kara, for humanizing finance. Really appreciate your thoughts and for taking the time to share them with us today. Thank you. Thank you.